to see the, the makeup of this team. What, what, what impresses you so far? Well, this is a unique summer because we're going overseas in August, as you all know. So what we have are more practice opportunities, but it also means we have to get more stuff in. Normally, we wouldn't put in now what we're actually having to put in. So we're throwing a lot of stuff at them, and they picked it up really quickly. There are six new players, four freshmen, and they picked everything up amazingly quickly. And that's impressive to me because a lot of times it takes a while when you're, when you're throwing quick hitters and zone defense and press, motion offense, defensive concepts, terminology, continuity offense. We're throwing it all at them. Side out of bounds plays, out of bounds plays, out of the bounds, all the counters. It's, it's pretty involved. And normally, you know, we don't play for November, so you're not really worried about that, but we actually play in August, and so we'll get it all in. Have you seen in your past when you've taken teams overseas? Have you seen tangible value? Yeah, there's no question, you know, and what you hope, because you can go every four years, as you know, and so sometimes it falls particularly well. Uh, and I guess you could justify, you know, we have a veteran team, you just enough for a strong team to get more practice and then go over there and play and get your veteran team ready for a, a grueling big coach season. Or we've got a young team and it just gives us a little bit of a head start. But this is a pretty, we've got some veteran guys, but it's a pretty young team. It's a new team. A lot of those six new players are going to be playing a lot. So I just think in, in this situation, it's better. You have a veteran team coming back. It's a bonus, but it has more impact when you have a young team than you guys. What do you expect from Kevin? I mean, he is one of those veterans we're talking about. Yeah, I, I, I expect him to be not only a consistent performer, but a leader. And because we've had really good leaders the last couple of years, whether it be Luca, or Jordan, or Connor, uh, Chris, Keegan, like those guys were all really good, good leaders in that sense. So now those guys are all gone. So who's it going to be? Obviously, Tony, Peyton, and Patrick are the two guys to think about. So that's what I'm expecting from them. Coach, you got quite a bit more uh, on court depth again from last season with the transfer portal and bringing in some freshmen. Does it change how you approach things at the end of the season? No, it's, it's just a, you know, it's, it, it's welcome. I mean, we, we were really lucky last year. Uh, when you think about it, Chris, Connor, and Phillip played 3,000 minutes. We did not have a lot of depth to the front court. And had any one of those three guys gotten hurt, it would have really impacted our ability to make this level of tournament. So when we watch practice and we review practice now, we're so much bigger and so much better on the glass. Owen and, and Lodgy in particular, uh, as freshmen, have been very impressive. Ben is what we expected him to be. Uh, he's been terrific. Uh, you know, but across the board, there's just so many different ways we can go. You know, we can swing, you know, Peyton, Price, Patrick, we can play, you know, two bigger forwards if we need to. But just having traffic rebounders, physical size, uh, and also a much more physical post presence. Not that we didn't have it last year, but we were really seriously concerned about foul trouble. You know, Philip or Chris was in foul trouble, that was going to be really hard. When you look at this freshman, Lodgy's been really impressive so far. Uh, he's obviously a big body. You know, he's probably 260 pounds, but he's got really good. He's got a really good skill set. He moves it. He can put it on the deck. He can, he can make threes. But he has been a phenomenally impressive rebounder so every day since he got here, which is what we need from that position. So she exceeded your expectations in that regard. No, I, I think that's what we expected. Okay. But I, I think in fairness to your question, that uh, most freshmen don't come in and consistently rebound the way he has. Even if you, it's there, like you thought it was there, it's just every day he's, he's up over 10, 10 rebounds in practice. And that's good. On a trip like this, you want to get everybody the same amount of minutes, do you think? Well, matter of fact, what we're going to do, we're going to do something unique. Like we're not going to 
like, I'm not going to approach every game where uh, okay, this is my starting lineup. We don't have a starting lineup now. We don't, we don't have a starting lineup in August. So we'll put three different teams together. When I say that, like, like seven guys, they're going to play the whole time. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to do is each one of my assistants is going to coach a game. So we have three games. So Matt will coach a game, Sherman will coach a game, Cordy will coach a game. And we'll have different combinations, young guys, old guys. And we'll try to you know, get guys like Amari on some playing time and things like that. So I, I, I just I want everybody to go over there and feel like they had an ample, ample opportunity to play. And the other thing is, so if they don't play today, I mean, tomorrow you're going to play 38 minutes or 35 minutes. They're not going to some crummy, you know, isolated villages. You're going to three of the best places in the world. Is that by design? It, it is. You know, I think when you look at it, the, it, it's much more than a basketball experience. It, it's a cultural, educational, team bonding opportunity. And I've been fortunate enough to do this more than a few times. And the impact is so much more impressive when it comes to the big picture than it is specifically related to basketball. The games themselves are moderately important, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, and that's been a, that's been a shift. Like in, in the past, when we used to go, you know, we played the Lakers the Final Four. And, and uh, the last time we went, it was much more relaxed. It's get guys playing time, build confidence, get young guys opportunity. I don't really need to see what Tony Perkins can do. We know what Tony Perkins can do. I don't need to find out what our other guys can do. And that's going to be more important. Coach, you mentioned the freshman class picking things up quickly. Is, is that relatively uncommon to see the, the transition be that smooth? Well, I think it's uncommon that it's across the board. You know, there's some guys just are naturally gifted in that area. They just pick it up. You know, it's not that you can't learn a play, but it's, it's learning the counters and then the nuances of it. Uh, the motion offense is seemingly simple, but if you're not screening and moving and cutting with a purpose, it doesn't work. It just looks like mush, a bunch of guys running around, and there's no success in that in that formula. So these guys have, I think, innate basketball instincts. Uh, so if we're going to be a transition to motion team, which we are most of the time, you have to be that kind of player to perform well. If you're a mechanical thinking guy, and I, okay, we're running, we're running a set play, I gotta line up on the block, and then I screen across, then I pop out. You can do that, but that's not how we play. The guy like Brock watches some of his high school kids, it just looks like a kid who's fearless. Oh yeah, he's, he's always been that way. Uh, very competitive, phenomenally confident in himself, and his ability to make plays. Make plays by design, or make plays when there's really doesn't look like there's anything there. If somebody's got to go do something, he's really good in that. In that area. Okay, guys. Thank, Appreciate it.